In this video, I'll be showing you the latest state of the Pennsylvania and Ohio Railroad route, which consists of a detailed map showing the scope of the route, known as Stage 1, also many images of areas that are near finished, as well as some that still have lots to do, and a few short video clips to showcase the route. So let's get into it. OK, here's the map. It's a fairly large image, about 4000 by 4000 pixels, which allows me to zoom in where I'll be talking about specific features. However, while I have the whole map up, I should mention this module is about 23 miles wide at the top, and of course the same down both sides being a square image. But because the main line runs diagonally from top left towards bottom right, there is about 25 miles of main line track as the crow flies. I estimate the mainline track is about 65 miles in length. I'll move up to the top right corner, which is where this route was started, just below the Baltimore and Ohio interchange tracks, which you'll see here. Below this is a combined staging yard, fiddle yard and classification yard complex, with a large loop of three tracks around the yard area, which can easily handle six trains of one mile length which is suitable for both AI trains, which you may use in sessions, as well as normal trains, which I happen to use as directed by the JMRI Operations Pro software, which generates switch lists for me. Included is a north and south oriented fiddle yard, and in between those two fiddle yards, there's a fairly complete classification yard. Everything starts from this point. Moving north, I will come to the Ashfield City slash Bannister industrial area, referred to by the Pennsylvania and Ohio workers as the Ashfield Bannister Loop. This loop is designed as a special area and organised to provide some challenging switching operations. The loop has two areas, Ashfield, a medium sized city, with the yard in the middle of the city serving a large produce warehouse complex, as well as a couple of other medium sized industries, and a reefer service area for adding nice to reefers. And later, I'll have a short video demonstrating a typical shunting session in this yard. The clip will be increased in speed, however, to limit the time taken, but we'll show the complexity of the movements that can apply. Asheville City also has a medium-sized passenger station. Moving to the other side of the loop, we have Bannister, with a number of industries serviced by the railroad. It also has a small passenger depot, and this is for workers who come to work on the special train, from towns further along the line. At the moment, if I want to play trains, I concentrate here on this loop, because with JMRI software, I can have a different session every day with just a single clip of a button, and no two switch lists are ever the same. I can schedule one train per session, or several, depending on my move. I can even schedule passenger trains if I just want to run trains for a change. To be honest though, I don't run trains very often. Sitting back in a cab for an hour and a half watching scenery go by is not my idea of fun. And that's not to belittle those of you who enjoy the challenge of driving a train, not at all. I think you will find driving in this route very challenging, with many places a helper engine is added, they need to be attached. I think the maximum grade rarely exceeds 1.8%, but there are exceptions, just over 2% is the maximum. But some of these grades are winding their way up a long drag. And with some 65 miles from one end to the other, there's plenty of variety, and the future will see the adding of a full route of the Clinchfield Railroad from Elkhorn City to Johnson City, which is something else again. Anyway, enough rambling. Moving on then. Now, we're moving on to an area called Danforth, which is named after a local personality. This is just a small yard of two tracks, which is where the helper engine comes after it returns back down the hill and uses this as an escape to get out of the way. It just has an old caboose for the yard office and a small shed to house the track worker's rail car, as well as a water tower for the helper engines, which are still mainly steam engines at this time. And here's a quick clip showing typical helper engine moving out, get into position for the next scheduled train going up the grade.
Now I'll quickly move on to the Eagle Y, which consists of two passing loops plus a Y for turning engines and a small worker's camp. Now I'll move on to the Fullerton Interchange Yard which is mainly used for collecting together all the coal traffic coming from the North Fork Turn Branch just to the west. There are a number of operational tipples on the North Fork Branch as well as a company town and this generates a significant amount of coal traffic for the Pennsylvania and Ohio Railroad. This is about as far as we'll go for this episode. Just before I do finish up however, as promised here is the clip showing some shunting duties in the Ashfield Yard. There are two parts to this shunting video. The first covers the delivery of a number of reefer cars into the classification yard at Ashfield City by the peddler freight that passes through each day. The reefers will then be ready for the local shunter and the shunter crew will use the day's switch list to pick up the cars and distribute them as designated in that switch list. The peddler freight today is being pulled by a Pennsylvania and Ohio SD9 diesel with a variety of cars, many of which are destined for other locations. But it will make sure the reefers are dropped off at the Asheville City Classification Yard just off the main. You'll also notice that all the signals are working satisfactorily now. I did have one glitch because I had a signal that controls the switch heading into an unsignaled area, often called the Dark Territory, and I hadn't told the signal about that. The engine is pulling into the classification yard now and will first drop off the caboose. Then it will move forward to back into one of the classification yard tracks and drop off the reefers. Here they come. There they go. The engine uncouples the reefers from the last coal hopper and will then travel forward again to go back and pick up the caboose.
It's a smooth coupling. They hardly spilled the guard's coffee. And now the train will head off down the track to deliver its cars wherever they need to go. The local shunter, sitting in the service area in the middle of the Y, will now run out, pick up the reefers from the classification yard and drop them off in the small yard adjacent to the produce yard as well as the reefer icing facility and the large produce handling warehouse. I'll now leave you to watch this part of it without comment. It should be plain enough. Hopefully this gives you some idea of a typical start to a shunter's day in Ashfield City. However, I'll be doing another video moving further along the track shortly. So, if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to keep in touch with what's happening in this route, I'd recommend you do subscribe and hit the bell to the right as well to ensure you get notified when the next episode is uploaded.
But now, that's it from me. Hooroo.